landscape drawing. So here's an image by Martin Stankiewicz of charcoal on paper. Shows a great use of foreground, middle ground, background, which we're going to be learning about um, in the in landscape. Foreground is the uh, front area, middle ground is the middle area, and the background is the back area. Um, it also kind of shows a reduction in detail in the background that's going to be useful for you later on to do. So here's some tips. Negative space, look for the negative space around things. Um, you can see in the tree on the left, for example, things aren't completely drawn and things are left blank. Squinting, when you squint, you can see things more clearly. These are more Martin Stankiewicz examples. So when you squint, basically what happens is um, you reduce things down, uh, reduce the, the details so you just see the contrast. Hatching. Hatching is a wonderful thing in landscape. It can be hard to get the handle of, hand, a handle on, but um, uh, if you work in pen, this is an example pen and paper, then you have no choice but to hatch, and um, this is a great example of hatching in pen. You can see what's also really interesting about this picture is that there's no grass drawn in this area, and there's no tops to these trees drawn, and our mind still kind of completes the picture, and it's still a lovely image. You don't have to draw in every area. You could just draw in, for example, here where the trees are, are shading, shading grass. A lot of patch hatching being used in the tree over here and little lines for the grass. More hatching examples. You can see some, some ribboning and squiggly lines. You can see the squiggly lines in the trees. So you're going to watch a, a, a video on how to do squiggly lines. Um, for trees, and then you can see some ribbing in the grass and some patching the grass. This just talks about blank space and that you really don't have to fill everything to complete the picture. Look at the nice use of the empty space in both the grass and the upper part of the trees. Um, really, only the tree shadows and the grass are being drawn. Another great use of white space by this artist Martin Stankiewicz again on ink and paper and excellent um, you know use of whites of, of the white blank space and you can see that even parts of the tree aren't drawn and we focus on the elements in the foreground because they're more detailed lovely hatching in the grass imitating movement so you could just do squiggly lines for trees, but not all trees are made the same. They all have different types of foliage. So you should look at what the leaf patterns look like. A pine needle is very different. It's very long and thin from like a maple leaf. Um, so you want to like kind of imitate what the leaf pattern is doing. This shows you, uh, you know, in drawing ground under a tree, a common mistake is to draw a straight line under the tree when in fact a tree um, shouldn't have a straight line and you can see that it's gradually shaded along the edge of the tree. One side is shaded darker because the sun comes from one side, sun does not come from two sides, and then the side that's shaded um, over here uh, because the sun is on this side. So these are just different ground surfaces by this artist who um, I linked to her tutorials on my site and um, you'll see that she's mastered drawing these different kinds of grounds. Here's some, another artist example of a drawing in charcoal. Lots and lots of details in this drawing. Note the foreground tree, nice composition. Here's a Van Gogh drawing. Uh, Van Gogh is really a master at hatching of different hatching techniques that are super fun from these lines to the little circles and the patch hatching in the tree. And look at the value changes in the hatching. Um, we have much darker values in this tree and this tree, and lighter values in this foreground here. And the darkest value and props in this detail is in this foreground element here of these branches. Another uh, Van Gogh uh, example with excellent use of uh, hatching and in his style. In the bottom, we see some stippling in the bottom here and some uh, curves here and um, the curves also in, in the clouds, it might remind you of Starry Night. Uh, here's an example um, of a, from a hanging scroll. And um, this shows some different value changes as well. 
and some details in the darker branches in the foreground. Here's a Gainsborough image um, of uh, trying black and white chalk used on a toned paper of gray blue. It's a fun way to um, do a landscape. You can see the use of the hatching and lines in both the white and the black. And this is uh, an artist, Alfonso Dunn, who draws in ink and um, is an amazing ink artist. I have his book and I link to his tutorials on my site as well. I highly recommend you look into it. And my last image is of uh, Annabelle Karachi's landscape with smiling sunrise um, from the late 1500s. And this is a female artist uh, working in the late 1500s, which is highly unusual. And uh, shows she has a little sense of humor with a smiling sun sunrise here. And excellent use of like this kind of fun ribboning here in the hills and fun ribboning in the ground and in the tree. You see some nice hatching um, and some, some fun shapes in, in the clouds here. And that's the end of my lecture. Thank you.